Hello, my Council on Aging friends. Yeah, it's really nice to be with you. I'm Joanne McInnes. I'm a registered nurse of 40 years and I own and operate Aberdeen Home Care in Danvers. It might be that I have visited you in the past and I have been around to a lot of local Council on Aging's and we have had rousing discussions on a variety of things. We might have been talking about estate planning or getting your affairs in order or uh, medical paperwork. We might have been talking about COVID-19. Whatever we discussed, I have many fond memories of having been with you out there in your beautiful locations. And now because of where we are in the world, this is how we're operating and this is how we're coming to you. What I'd like to talk to you about today is I'd like to sort of take us through the whole COVID-19 experience right up to where we find ourselves today. There's so much information out there. I'm sure you're getting it every day like I am from a wide variety of sources. Maybe you're getting it from news outlets or you're watching medical programs or you're listening to people on morning shows and you're getting a lot of information and quite honestly, some of it contradicts what you've been told by someone else. It makes it very difficult for us, the consumers of information, to know what's right. So today I want to bring sort of the facts to you. I want to tell you about where we are now. I'm speaking to you just before the 4th of July. I'm not sure when you might see this, but I think um, what I'm saying is going to hold true for quite some time. The realities of COVID-19 are that the United States has seen 2.5 million cases and we are approaching 130,000 deaths. I did some statistics uh, the other day to, to compare where we're at with various wars, uh, World War I, II, and Vietnam, and the information is staggering. Of course, World War II had uh, many more casualties, but that went on for six years. Uh, we're talking about six months. And so if you take that data about loss of life and you bring it to a six month um, period of time, we're way over the death limit for all of those world wars, all of those of fatal catastrophes that we lived through. So you all know this is a very lethal, um, very, very intelligent virus that knows how to cling on to whatever gives it life and hang on to the very end. We've learned a lot in these past six months. We know how the virus is carried, we know how it infects, and we also know how to stay safe from it. So uh, we've maybe stopped that craziness of washing our groceries and and uh, feeling as though we need to have gloves on whenever we leave the house. We are continuing to use our friend, the mask, showing support for my Red Sox. We're continuing to have our masks at the ready. We're continuing to have our hand sanitizer at the ready, and we're watching where we go. So the three W's that I always talk about are wash your hands, whether it's soap and water for 20 seconds, happy birthday times two, with a lot of friction, whether it's hand sanitization with an alcohol-based product, uh, washing your hands, wearing your mask, and watching where you go. There's a lot of risk as we go into the world. When we come into the indoors of the fall and the winter, that's our cold and flu season. Not because the cold weather brings it on. You know, you're not gonna catch your death of pneumonia because you don't go outside with a jacket on. What you're going to do is catch your death of pneumonia by being indoors with no ventilation breathing the air of someone who has pneumonia. Pneumonia is spread exactly the same way as the COVID-19 virus on droplets that come out of our breath, whether we are talking, singing, uh, shouting, talking loudly, laughing, coughing, sneezing. Anytime we're emitting with force any breath out of our airway, we are putting these molecules into the air. So now we know that that's a bigger concern for us than, oops, I touched this Kleenex box, and someone else might have touched it because the virus tends to not live on surfaces as long uh, as we were originally told. Another important thing to know is the term viral load. So there are these individuals out there in the community called super spreaders and we yet cannot identify them. As we begin to do contact tracing and we find that Oh, the 10 people that were around Mary Smith, who lives in Wenham, all got COVID. Mary Smith may end up being a super spreader. We all remember Typhoid Mary. Uh, we remember, remember that story from ages ago. Uh, so the same thing is holding true now for COVID-19. Watching where you're going and who you're with. This has everyone anxious because we're not sure where other people have been unless we ask them. It's perfectly okay to speak from your heart and say, 
I have underlying medical conditions that make me a little bit more at risk for COVID-19 perhaps than other people. So I'm taking extra precautions. I am using abundant caution uh, in my interactions with people. So rather than point the finger and say, you need to wear a mask, you can all, I always think it's a good idea to go to yourself first and say, for my protection and yours, I'm wearing the mask. And it would be great if we could both do that. We've all had experiences either at the gas station, grocery store, bank, wherever we've been, and we can see a lot of this. The nose is hanging over the mask. Uh, I saw that today. I was on a Zoom with the director of a healthcare facility, and I saw this. At one point, all of these people were in a room, and I had to remind them they all had taken their masks off. I was on Zoom. I was at no risk, but they were. And I had to remind them to put their masks on, gently and kindly and for their own good. It's not just about my health. It's about my health and your health. It's about me and my neighbor. You know, let's take it back to Mr. Rogers. Good old Fred Rogers. Boy, what a visionary he was and continues to be in our hearts. But it's about our neighbor. It's about us and our neighbor. So the three W's are what is gonna be in your chest pocket or your purse or your handbag or whatever it is you're carrying around. You're going to wear your mask, you're going to wash your hands and you're going to watch where you go. Where is safe to go? You know, are you gonna be invited to a backyard barbecue this summer? Are you having a family reunion of sorts? Maybe so, and how are you going to manage that? It's always okay for you to operate within your comfort level. You can talk to the host of this event long before you get there. Could I just hear about the seating arrangement? Could I hear about what you have planned for food? Please don't be insulted, but I'm taking extra caution. And if you don't mind, I'd like to bring my own food. I'd also like to bring my own chair. And I'm not gonna sit in the neighbor's yard. I'll still sit in your yard, but I'm gonna take some distance that makes me feel comfortable. If people come up close to me, I'd really like it if you as the host could ask them to wear their mask. I might not have my red socks on the whole time, but I will have my mask handy. And if someone approaches me and I feel the least little bit uncomfortable, I'm putting the mask on. It's not rude. It's not um, slamming the door on somebody. It's not making a political statement. All it's doing is protecting you and everyone else around you. It's really such a simple thing. So since I'm talking to um, elders, you know, people that uh, are not so far from my own age, I want to share a little funny story that I saw on Facebook. Maybe some of you saw it. So there was an elderly woman, shall we say, with ample bosom. And we also in the field might call that a pendulous breast. And so you now all have that perfect vision of what I'm talking about. Do you remember Maxine? She was uh, somebody from the 70s and 80s on greeting cards and so forth, kind of wild hair, and she had a crazy dog. So as this woman in the, in the cartoon says, I'm not wearing my bra for my own comfort because quite frankly, it's uncomfortable. I'm wearing it for yours. And then at the next frame said, wear your mask. She kind of came on with that, you know, that gray panther look and said, wear your mask. Same kind of thing goes true. I also have another little visual for you when you see something like this. So there's a lot of nose breathing going on here and there's no protection whatsoever. So there was a little cartoon that also went around about this cute little toddler. Maybe he was a little over a year old, just walking, and he had his little pamper on, but his little uh, urinary device was hanging out over his diaper. And the caption there was, this diaper is doing him no good, and neither is this mask. So two cute things for you to think about when you see people wearing the mask and you um, are alerted to the fact that that's not doing much good. You have two choices in that situation. You can address respectfully the other person or you can walk away. <laughs> it's up to you. The whole mask has become a political statement and it's so unfortunate. Imagine if washing your hands was a political statement. And if you were in a at a restaurant and somebody in the bathroom said, well, you know, there's nobody gonna tell me to wash my hands, so I'm gonna use the facilities and not wash my hands. Well, that's just plain disgusting. And so is, quite frankly, not wearing a mask. It is not caring about other people. I'm not so worried about the person not willing to wear the mask because they're making their own personal choice about what they contract. It's the people that are at more risk, and let's face it, the older you are, the more at risk you are. Right now, in places like Florida, Arizona, California, Texas, we're seeing a huge development of disease in, those, in the age group of 20 to 40. 
Now those are the people that maybe were at Fort Lauderdale during college spring break and now it's catching up with them. Many states are wide open. We saw in Missouri that swimming pool thing where they were all crammed one to another in a swimming pool and that was you know many weeks ago, maybe six weeks ago now. Again with the political protests, we're seeing lots of people out together, many not wearing masks, many opening themselves up, not just to get sick, but to carry that back to you or carry that back to a college friend who happens to be your grandson, who's going to be visiting you over the summer. This is why I bring this kind of stuff to your attention. It's important for us to have a little levity about this because uh, it's just quite frankly so serious that we would all be walking around like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, uh, oh me oh my, uh, if we didn't find a little levity. Hence my reference to those cute little cartoon things. But really, the fact of the matter is this is quite serious and it's not going away anytime soon. Boy, are we in Massachusetts so fortunate that we had very strict stay in place regulations because the states that did not are now seeing what that has cost them. There has been a cost to their being open and that cost is disease that's uh, really climbing up the charts. 70% increases in those states that I have mentioned. Uh, not long ago, perhaps just a few days ago now, and it might be longer by the time you see this film, uh, Massachusetts enjoyed a zero death day a zero death day has not happened. We went up to 25 deaths a day after, and our numbers are going to continue to go a little bit like a staircase and not, you know, not like a ski slope. So don't be alarmed by that. We're looking at trending as far as these numbers are concerned. This stuff doesn't evaporate right away. As far as the second wave is concerned, the second wave will be what it is. We are continuing to do the same things right now that we've been doing all along that we will continue to do into the unforeseeable future. We are gonna to continue to do the three W's. Say it with me. Even if you're at home all by yourself, say it with me. I feel like Miss Jean from Romper Room. I see Billy and Johnny and Mildred. Say it with me. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and watch where you go. It's really that simple. There's no, this isn't, you know, some advanced mathematical equation. It's that simple. Hand sanitizer in your car, hand sanitizer everywhere. If you're really afraid, wear a pair of gloves. Let's talk about being afraid. <laughs> if you're really afraid, that's a terrible place to be, especially if you happen to be an elder who lives alone. Do not suffer in silence. Call your friends at the Council on Aging. Ask to talk to somebody. Call your primary care, your health care provider, and say, my anxiety is through the roof. I can't sleep, I can't eat, or all I can do is watch TV 24-7. I can't get enough information. You're really on overload at that point. You know that old saying, you are what you eat? The same is true for you are what you take in. You, are, you become who you are around. You become what you watch and listen to, and that's going to affect your, your overall mental health and feelings of well-being. If you feel as though you're suffering in a way that's not manageable, please reach out because there is help all over the place. There are so many resources. I'm gonna invite you to go to my website. My website is Aberdeen, and that's spelled just like the city in Scotland, for which it is named. Aberdeen is spelled A-B-E-R-D-E-E-N. Aberdeen at home, and that's the word A-T. Aberdeenathome.com. We have a COVID page, and on that COVID page, we have printables. We have downloaded information. We have self-care modules that will take you through your entire week, one for every day of the week, charting where you are. A lot of people use these tools back in the, you know, in the coldness of March and April when we were really stuck indoors and maybe feeling all these feelings very intensely. I'm encouraging you to go to that website because there's lot there are a lot of tools there that could be helpful to you and please share them with others. I look forward to a period in time when we can be together again, when I can come out and visit you at your beautiful centers and we can talk about this. There's a certain amount of traumatic, post-traumatic stress disorder, if you will, about having gone through this. Maybe some of you have lost friends. Maybe some of you have lost loved ones. Maybe some of you yourselves have had COVID-19 or you have family members that are frontline workers. Maybe they're in municipal services, fire, police, uh, EMS, uh, emergency re responders, ambulance drivers, so EMTs. Maybe they work in hospitals, in any one of a variety of, of uh, careers or in long-term care or in home care like me. 
it's impacted us all and it's touched almost everybody. And so finding a way as a community for us to process this together will be something that I know will be filling up my September, October, and November as I visit with you and help facilitate discussions about how we're coping with what we've been through. Most of us are not alive uh, back in the Spanish flu. I do remember seeing my grandparents' pictures of the front of Addison Gilbert Hospital. I was um, born in Gloucester and seeing the tents that were erected on Washington Street out in front. And I remember my grandfather who was born in 1888 telling me the stories. He was, what would that be, 20 years old when that happened? And telling me the stories of the horrors of what that was like. And one day we'll be telling our grandchildren and great grandchildren of the horrors of what COVID-19 was. Hopefully most of that is in the past. Anyway, it's a pleasure and an honor for me to be with you today. Um, and also I have one more piece of information for you uh, out there in TV land or Council on Aging land or whatever land you're living in. Um, we have an email address here at Aberdeen and it's called simply this, virus at aberdeenathome.com. And when I say virus at, I mean the at symbol. Uh, virus at aberdeenathome.com. I see those emails that come in, and since we've started that email address, we have had legions of people emailing us with specific questions. I've addressed some of those on the radio. Um, I can be seen, uh, heard, actually, not seen, heard, on Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m. on the local North Beverly radio station, North Shore 1049. Since COVID began, I've been on the show, started out every day, and for the past month, it's been Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and now I'm going to Wednesday only. So Wednesday morning at 8 a.m., you can hear me. The little, um, the little clip is called Information from the Nurses Station. So please join there if you wanna hear the updated information about COVID, 1049, your FM dial, and uh, also check us out at virus at aberdeenathome.com. Send me your questions, send me your concerns. Maybe I'll read them on the air. Another place to get information is a weekly radio program that I and my colleague Scott Muir, many of you have known him, he's visited many of the councils on aging with me. We do this radio show every Sunday morning at 7.30, again on North Shore 1049. It's called Caring Voice. And of course, we've devoted an awful lot of radio time to COVID-19 and all that it has meant to all of us in the community. Please tune in for that. We're dealing with spiritual crises in the midst of this virus, feeling anxious and alone, viral updates, discussion of popular terms. Uh, we have had local clergy, we have had local mental health people on. We have had a local physical therapist right here from uh, right here in Wenham on to join us to talk about how this has impacted us as well as local physicians. So it's, a, it's definitely a program of value and I encourage you to check that out Sunday morning 7.30 a.m. North Shore 1049 and Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. 1049 for information, say it with me, at the nurse's station. So um, as you know, I love an interactive um, group. If you've ever seen me in person, you know, I want us to all be joyful and all be in this together. So I'm actually sitting here staring at the iPhone who's uh, recording me and my cameraman, uh, Scott Muir, my esteemed colleague. So he's giving me the coaching behind the camera and I hope this has been meaningful for you. It's great to reach out and uh, hopefully bring you some some comfort and some reassurance and some simple ways to stay, stay safe. Please, please wear the mask and don't forget the three W's. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and watch where you go. I hope to see you very soon. I'm Joanne with Aberdeen Home Care.